What is MQTT? What is the tick stack? What capabilities would this provide us in our temp sensor project? In this video, I cover the basic concepts of MQTT, we get a tick stack up and running on DigitalOcean, and we get our particle argon to start sending temperature readings that we can consume from anywhere, not just when I'm in the closet heading out the door. So let's jump into MQTT and the tick stack. And before we actually set all this up and actually get our devices communicating using it, what I want to do is just jump into a little bit of theory to start out with so we get a good fundamental understanding of what uh, these various items are. So when we're thinking about MQTT, the first thing is it stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. It was invented by IBM back in 99. It's an ISO standard. So this is very prevalent throughout industry as a way for uh, devices to communicate information. And it does sit on top of TCP IP as opposed to some other protocols that would sit on top of UDP. It's also the case that there is a version of MQTT that I believe is still being worked on or maybe out there at this point that uses UDP versus TCP. But we're going to use the TCP version for everything we do uh, in this video. So there are some unique characteristics associated with MQTT. The first is that it's a publish and subscribe protocol. So uh, you'll hear people refer to it in, in short as PubSub. And it, essentially what this means is that there's no communication from one client to another via an address, like an IP address. Essentially, clients that are publishing information really don't have any idea how many other clients are out there that have subscribed to the message and are getting the data, and vice versa. So it's basically as devices subscribe to certain things, pieces of information, which we'll talk about in a second, they will get that information if a client publishes information to that uh, topic. And essentially, it's really a many-to-many -many topology. So some of these diagrams I pulled from HiveMQ that are on their website, and I think they do a good job of kind of describing the general process here. So the first thing to understand is that you will always need a broker. So you need some broker in the middle that is sitting and publishing and listening on various what we call topics. And in this case, we have a client out here that is actually publishing to a temperature topic. And when it does, it publishes, in this example, 21 degrees. And this broker now, when it receives that, is going to send that out to any other client that's subscribed to the same topic. So if they've subscribed to temperature, they're going to get that information when it is uh, transmitted. The other thing to think about is that the client does need to make, initially, an MQTT connection. So they first will connect to the broker. And at that point, after that, they can do their subscriptions and so forth, and they can do their publishing. But the connect is what they want to do at the beginning, and that connection should stay live. And so there's some overhead in the initial connect, but once you've connected, then you're free to publish and listen to information without having to go through that connection every time. And this is different than HTTP, for example. So in HTTP, you reestablish a connection every time. So if you were doing an HTTP post or put with information, you're going to have more overhead every time you send something than you are uh, via MQTT. And then this kind of gives an, a, a description of the process sort of numbered out. So here an MQTT client will subscribe and they will get a subscription acknowledged back and the client now knows that it's successfully subscribed. And then over here, the MQTT client will publish something that they've subscribed to, and that published piece of information will go to the MQTT client. And then this kind of shows a one-to-many. Here you have a client publishing something, and because all of these clients subscribed, then that item is going to go out to all three of them. Okay, so let's look at topics. So topics are sort of the organizational way or the channel in which information flows. And a topic can be called anything you want, really. Um, and they also use the slash um, 
definition or architecture, so very much like a directory system on your computer. And so what you can do is you can organize your topics. This might be one typical organization, so it might say my home, and then I might organize the next level to be the various floors, so the ground floor or the upstairs or the basement. And then within the floor, I might have living room, dining room, and then finally what it is I'm reporting about in that particular location. So you can literally publish to this string, if you will, this topic, and if another client has subscribed to this string or topic, uh, they will get the message. And there's no setup, there's nothing you have to do ahead of time with the broker to allow for these topics. These topics can just be created on demand. And there are two key wildcards that are kind of neat. So one is the plus sign, which basically says, I can now uh, send a temperature out to all of the various rooms on the ground floor. And then finally, the multi-level wildcard would say, I'm going to send uh, this message to everybody on the ground floor, and it's going to go to anybody that's subscribed to temperature or maybe humidity or some other thing. It's going to go to everybody that's uh, subscribed to those items. So those are the two key wildcards. We won't use them in what we're doing, but they're good to know. The other thing is quality of service. So there are three qualities of service. The one that we will use to start with is at most once, uh, and that's quality level zero. And then quality one is at least once, which means that um, the message has at least been uh, sent once and acknowledged. And the third one is exactly once, which says that not only has it been sent and received, it's not going to be sent multiple times. Now, the other one is retained messages. So this is kind of cool. Um, you can have it where messages are retained by the broker. So it will remember the last message sent on a particular topic. So new subscribers, when they subscribe to the topic, are going to get that last message. And so this is perfect, again, for scenarios. Let's say you're only updating temperature every 30 minutes. Well, if I decide to subscribe to a temperature reading, and let's say it's a refrigerator or something, I don't want to wait 30 minutes to get an update, uh, which would be the worst case time if I just missed the update from uh, when I subscribed. So this way, when I subscribe, I will get an update right away, and then I'll get another update wherever that was in the 30-minute span, and then every 30 minutes after that. And then, of course, uh, well, and then finally, there's the last will and testament. So it's kind of a cool name, but essentially, it is what is sent out if uh, a client gets disconnected. So what I could, for example, subscribe to this, and then... Other clients, if they get disconnected, I could get a message saying that the client did get disconnected and then I could do something based on that. So there's uh, several free MQTT test brokers you can use. Test.mosquito.org, Broker.HiveMQ, and IoT Eclipse. Um, I have used Test.mosquito.org um, and I find that it's generally available. Uh, I do find, though, that these endpoints do go down from time to time, and you're sort of scratching your head thinking you're doing something wrong, and then you find out, oh, the broker is actually down. So um, you feel free to use these to start with, but what I'm going to do in the next uh, part of the video is show you how, we can, how easy it is to bring up our own broker right on a DigitalOcean droplet as an example, and then we have a lot more insurance, if you will, that it's going to always be available. The other piece of test software that I really love is MQTT Box. Um, so this is available on Linux, Mac, and Windows, and we will use it in the demo. And what I love about MQTT Box is the simplicity in which it allows you to connect to a broker and then publish and subscribe to topics. And so when we get our argon to start sending information, we can actually see it coming up in a subscription that we've done on our MQTT box, as well as it going to the tick stack and other things. So it's um, uh, definitely a tool to get, it's free, and I would use this for all my MQTT testing. Okay, so let's jump into the tick stack and talk about it for a minute. So the tick stack is really a way for, uh, in a kind of a really professional way to 
be able to absorb IoT information over time. And this is specifically optimized for time series data. So it could be perfect for temperature and humidity readings and other things that are happening over time and we want to collect all that data. And so Telegraph is going to be the thing that is sort of absorbing the data and then it puts it into an Influx database. InfluxDB is our time series database. So uh, it could go to MySQL or whatever, but generally speaking, um, if you have a lot of time series data and you have it coming in very rapidly and from a lot of different sources, InfluxDB is specifically optimized to manage that kind of input and uh, it does a great job at that. And so it's sort of a great go-to database for time series data. And then chronograph is how we visualize things. So we're, of course, we've got all this data going into the database and now we wanna have a cool dashboard that shows us the information and we can look at things over time and zoom in on pieces of information. Uh, and that's primarily what you use chronograph for. And then finally, capacitor is an application that's also sitting there looking at the data coming in from Influx, but it is there to alert you of various issues that may occur. Um, you might have certain thresholds that if they get out of whack, you want to be alerted. Um, and it can also be used to downsample information and so forth. We're not going to go through capacitor in this uh, video just because we don't have the time or I don't really have a, a specific need for it in our little temp sensor project at this point. So if we look at Telegraph, Telegraph is the one that's ingesting all of this information. And then as you can see, um, what's interesting is there's over 200 plugins, which I'll get to in a minute. But uh, essentially, they've set this up so easily so that you can pull information from all these different sources and then push this information into Influx. And what I've done is put a little diagram together that I hope you can see, which kind of shows the general architecture of this. So essentially you will have up here, it shows at Etsy, telegraph, telegraph.conf. That's a configuration file that Telegraph uses whenever it starts up. And in there it specifies all of the different input, input plugins that we're gonna use, the parser plugins. Um, and then there are these aggregator plugins that allow you to aggregate information and do other things with it. And then there's the output plugins that allow you to output it to uh, various places. Could be TCP, MQTT, in our case it's Influx. And basically uh, you'll see in the file a bunch of headers that will say inputs dot and it might say uh, MQTT consumer as an example or MQTT. And that's the area where you will put the information in for how you want Telegraph to pull information from that particular source. And of course, then it flows through and goes into InfluxDB. Again, we will do this uh, in the next part of the video, but essentially this shows you for the MQTT consumer, which is basically what we're setting up as an input. So we're a client. And it's looking at localhost, and that's where we've set up our MQTT broker. And we've set our quality connection, a timeout, and then our topic is WCL Tox Tech Argon Display. And so again, this could have been whatever we wanted. This is completely arbitrary. The key there is this has to be the same name that we then program on our Argon when we're posting temperature information to a topic. These have to match, otherwise they're not going to see each other. And we do want to keep the persistent session to be true. Uh, client ID, the only thing about uh, brokers is that every client ID needs to be unique. So if I were to fire this up and then fire it up on another instance but talking to the same uh, broker, uh, the last one that connects is going to win. So uh, for now, we've called it Telegraph, but um, these should probably be something a little more unique so that you don't have them stepping on each other. And then finally, this is important, the format, uh, the data format tells the system it's a value and that it is of type float. And that's important when it puts it into the Influx database that it puts it in the right format. And of course, anytime you touch that configuration file, you want to do a restart. Um, and I, again, we're gonna do this on Ubuntu and we're using system control to do this, uh, to run it as a daemon. So system control restart telegraph causes it to reread the configuration file and start over. 
If it has issues, it doesn't necessarily report it there, so I always try to follow it with system control status telegraph, and this is a good status. So you'll see this actually shows up in green, uh, and it does say active running, and that's what you want to see uh, to have confidence that telegraph is up and running. So the next thing is InfluxDB. So this data is going into InfluxDB, which is our time series database. And uh, just a couple things. Of course, it's a database, and I, I wasn't able to find a tool out there like Navicat, which I use for kind of a visual way of traversing MySQL and so forth. Um, maybe there is one out there. If somebody knows, it'd be great to you know put it in the comments below. But essentially what this does is uh, through the command line interface, I've gone into Influx DB on our server and I've told it to use Telegraph. Use Telegraph is basically saying use a particular database. And then I want to show measurements. So measurements are like tables in SQL. And so we can see all of the different measurements here or tables that have been created. And the MQTT consumer is the one that we want to see uh, because that tells us that our plugin going out to our MQTT broker is actually receiving data. And so the first time it does receive data, if this table doesn't exist or this measurement doesn't exist, it'll create it. And then here I do a select star from MQTT consumer, which is the table, and uh, here I get a list. So, you know, here's the time, the host uh, that uh, put it in, the topic that was related to it, and a value. And so those are all configurable. But as you can see, we are getting data and it's showing up in the database. And the cool thing about Influx is that you can query this database in a bunch of different ways, but the syntax is very much like MySQL. So if you've used MySQL you, in MySQL queries, you'll be very much at home here. And then third is Chronograph. So Chronograph is sitting here. Our visualization is querying the Influx database and pulling results and so forth. So what's cool about Chronograph is that you can go in and create these beautiful dashboards and have all of your data represented in the ways you want. And you can have this up and running kind of all the time on a screen somewhere, or you can just check it periodically. And uh, this is uh, the, really the way to go with your data visualizations. So again, this is all built into Chronograph and I'll show you how easy it is to set up and create. And uh, all of this stuff that I'm showing you is free. And then finally, Capacitor is the one that I talked about that's sitting here looking at the Influx DB, you know, going out to alert frameworks and other things. Again, uh, I just wanna mention it for completeness, but um, Capacitor is, uh, not going to be covered uh, in this video. So that's basically it. Um, well, now that we've covered the theory, let's go jump into creating all of this on a DigitalOcean instance, and then we'll jump into our code on our Argon and actually send data. All right, so I want to show you how easy it is to set up a tick stack uh, and an MQTT broker and then get it connected to our Argon display and have our temperature data not just showing up in our closet, but also going out to the net and a place where we can set up a dashboard and see the temperature data as well. So to start with, um, what you can do is go to influxdata.com, which I have here. And if I go to the download section, <clears throat> and let's clear that, you'll see that we have the four basic applications that make up the tick stack. What I'm going to do is do this on a DigitalOcean droplet. Um, and if you click here, you can see uh, all the different instructions for the different ways to install each one. Here, uh, what you're going to want to do if you're following along on, digi on a DigitalOcean droplet is to do the Ubuntu Debian install. And you'll see how they have just two commands here to do this. And what I love about it is the symmetry that they're all the same. So if I go here, this is a different one for influx, but it's the same two commands and the same for chronograph. And so there's chronograph there and the same for uh, capacitor. So let's go to DigitalOcean. And I'm going to log in. And we'll see that I have no droplet selected at this point. So what I'm going to do is create a droplet. And they've added this new marketplace, which I think is really cool. Um, so there's all these different setups that you can do. 
You can do, uh, in fact, this one, the influx tick um, setup, which basically will create your droplet and put everything in there. The only thing I don't like about it is that if you look at the version numbers here that it's gonna do, it's not the latest stuff. And for me, I kinda always like to do the latest. You could bring this droplet up and then upgrade everything, but that's uh, something for another video. So what I'm gonna do is actually just create an Ubuntu uh, standard uh, droplet, and we're gonna go down here to the cheap one at $5 a month. And because I'm in Chicago, we'll pick the New York data center and really that's it. I'll just hit create and we will start creating our droplet. Now once this droplet is complete, um, it'll send us an email with a IP address and an initial password. And then we'll go in and log in, we'll SSH in the first time, we'll change the password. And then that's all I'm gonna really do with respect to uh, permissions and so forth. There's a lot more to this. You should put your um, SSL keys um, down onto the device and disable root SSH and so forth. But I don't wanna get into all that. Um, I just wanna focus on the tick stack. So um, if we go to our mail here, we see DigitalOcean, here's an email. Here's our IP address and here's our password, okay? So what we'll do is um, create a terminal. I like iTerm. And then we will SSH to root and then we'll copy this IP address. And we will then go here and copy our password So we'll pass that in, and hit enter, and we're in. So now it's asking us to change the password. So we're gonna, okay, so now we're, we're into the system, we're on our droplet, we're on an Ubuntu stack, and we're ready to start installing the tick stack. So what I've done is I've, I have a link to this down in the um, show notes uh, description, but essentially what I've done is I've written out um, a set of steps to do this. So it's pretty easy. What I'm gonna do is just copy this first one. This is going to do the uh, telegraph installation. So we'll copy that in and then we'll go back here and we'll bring in uh, the influx database. And we'll come back here and do chronograph. And then we'll grab capacitor. And then we'll, now that we've at least retrieved them all, we can go ahead and install them. So we'll do each one of these for the install. Chronograph installed, and then again, we're gonna just use capacity, we're just gonna install it, just so that I don't see any errors when I bring up chronograph, um, but we're not gonna fiddle with capacitor right now. So at this point, we have uh, installed everything. Now some of these fire up automatically, like telegraph, but I noticed that influx and capacitor don't. And the way we can check this out is we can do um, pseudo system control here. Uh, status telegraph and we see right here it says active running in green and that's what we want to see and we want to see that for all of them if I did this for influx DB we notice that it says it's not running uh, so we don't get that active running and so what we want to do is to start it up is do a system control start you know, influx DB. Now if I go back and I look at the status, we see that the status is running, okay? And if we wanted to look at um, chronograph, for example, to see if it's running, we see that it's already running, so we don't need to do anything there. Uh, but if I do um, capacitor, 
we see that it's not. So what we're going to do is go ahead and do a start on capacitor. And I love their start message. And now we can go back to status. And it's running. And they took the time to do this really cool ASCII artwork for saying capacitor. So now we have those guys up and running. And the next thing we want to do is install MQTT. And this is really super easy to do as well. Uh, I see, you know, I have people hanging around me that go, oh, I had a hard time getting the MQTT broker going. And it just really is this easy, at least on Ubuntu. So we're going to do a sudo apt update. And then we're going to install uh, the MQTT uh, broker, which is Mosquito, and then um, a Mosquito client as well. So we'll pop that in, hit enter yes. And we have a broker up and running in theory. So one of the ways to test out the broker real quick is to use something that I love for the Mac and it's also available on the PC called MQTT Box. So if you go to MQTT Box, what you can do is create a new MQTT client. And so I click that and I'm just gonna call this uh, WCL Talks Tech. And there's really only a couple things you need to do. One is you need to set the protocol to MQTT TCP. And then over here for the host, we're not going to go to Eclipse, uh, or, which, by the way, Eclipse and also Mosquito have test brokers that are already out and running. But I like to install my own because I've noticed that those do go down quite a bit. And when they're down, none of your stuff works. Uh, and they're all free, but uh, this will run now on our droplet. And so what I want to do is go back here and copy our IP address. And we'll go back over here and pop this in and put in 1880. So if I save this, um, it will then tell us whether it's able to hit the uh, endpoint or not, and it is. Okay, so it's able to see um, the broker. It would not say connected if that was not the case. So uh, one of the other things that you can do, um, in this particular case, I don't have anything firewalled. So I think we'll be able to just run uh, without doing that. However, if you do want to lock things down a little more, you can follow through and use uh, UFW, which I like, for the firewall. And what we need to have open is SSH, so we can SSH in. The 8888 is where the um, chronograph is listening. And then there's the 1883 for, um, for our broker. So now we're up and running and we have our uh, Influx database running. So let's, let's sort of prove that. So what we can do is we can just say Influx here and we go into sort of the command line uh, for Influx. And here I can say show databases. And I see two databases, um, the internal one, which we're not going to worry about, but the other one is Telegraph. So when Telegraph started up with Influx there, it's created a database for us. And I could say use Telegraph, which would be using that database. And now I can say show measurements, which is what uh, basically they're like tables with uh, data that go in them. And we can see a bunch of different uh, measurements here. So what we want to do is Telegraph is ingesting basically data from the system, and it does that by default, which is cool. So for example, if I were to then go here to, uh, let's copy this, and we're going to go to 8888. So we've now hit our uh, website for Chronograph, and we're going to go ahead and initialize this to sort of get it going. Um, the influx DB uh, administration details right now are just admin and admin, and you can go in and change those obviously later. And now we've gone in and we are basically in chronograph, and it's asking us do we want to start with an initial uh, dashboard, which I like. So let's do that. We'll call this, uh, we'll pick up system. And we'll create the dashboard. And we don't need to worry about capacitor. It's running, but we'll just hit continue. 
and we can then say we're done. So I'm not gonna save that. And here's our connection to the Influx database. And over here we can see dashboards. If we click on the dashboard and then click here on system, we actually see the data coming up. So here, as I've been talking, data has been collected by Telegraph and put into the Influx database. And here's a, a set of um, uh, widgets, if you will, for this default um, uh, dashboard. So you definitely want to get this far. If this is not working, then nothing else is going to work until you get that up and running, okay? So let's go into, let's quit out of this. And one of the things we need to do now is tell Telegraph about our broker that's local and have it um, start ingesting and listening for data on a particular topic and then putting that into the Influx database. So what we do is we can say sudo vim and it's at et cetera. Uh, and we can say telegraph and then we can say telegraph.configure and we are now in the conf file. So it runs this every time Telegraph starts up. It's gonna look at this and this is going to determine what other plugins are used to grab data. And there are a ton of them in here. The one we're interested in though is MQTT Consumer. So I've searched for that and here I am at MQTT Consumer. And then what I'm gonna do is actually put in the configuration that I have set up for this. So essentially it's gonna be this data right here. And you'll see it starts out here, inputs MQTT consumer, just like it does here. And then what we're saying is the server uh, that is hosting the broker is localhost on 1883. And uh, the, we don't care about the quality of service, zero is fine. Um, put a connection timeout in there. And then the topic is gonna be WCL Toxtech Argon display. And uh, some other things that are critical right here at the end, data format, value, data type, float. So we want to make sure those are set properly so that the data, when we send something through MQTT as a number, it's actually read as a float and put into the Influx database as a floating point number. So I'm going to get out of this. And then what I'm gonna do is restart uh, Telegraph. So we can say sudo system restart Telegraph. And then anytime I do that, especially if I've made changes to the configuration file, I just go back and make sure that the status looks good. And it does, it's up and running, okay? So now if we jump back into Influx, and we say use Telegraph, which is our database, and we say show measurements. So we don't have anything new here yet, but we're about to see the whole connection come together. So I'm gonna go back here to MQTT uh, box and I'm gonna go make sure that I have the exact correct topic. So I'm copy that and we're gonna put that here for what we wanna publish. And I'm gonna publish a number like 25.5 and hit publish. So this is published to the broker, it's connected. So anybody that's listening should see that number. And so we can come back here, and if I do show measurements again, now we see MQTT consumer. So that is what it has, cre it's created a table, basically, uh, Telegraph has through Influx based on this um, plugin. And we can now say select star from MQTT consumer. So this should be, look very familiar if you've done any kind of SQL querying and SQL language work before. And sure enough, we see that we got a data item back. It's got the topic, it has the value that I sent, and it has the time that it was sent. And so if I, you know, sent another one, so let's go back up here. And by the way, I can create listeners here as well. So just like this guy is publishing, this guy can also be listening. So I can hit subscribe. So now here's a second subscriber. And now let's set the number to, I don't know, 27. So if I hit publish, 
There, it shows that it was listening and it got a 27. And if we come back here to our droplet and we do the select star from MQTT consumer, there, now we have two values. So now let's go set this up in the dashboard. So we're gonna go back here to uh, chronograph. I'm gonna go back to dashboards and I'm gonna create a new dashboard and we're gonna call this dashboard temp. And we will then say add data. So now this screen can be a little confusing. Took me a while to figure it out, but now you have the benefit of watching the video and me making this easy for you. So um, this is the default that will come up. And what you wanna do is come down here to this query and you're going to pick for the database telegraph and the dot autogen is really the, the, the next part of the database is the retention level. And we're just letting it do autogen for that. So we'll just pick that. Now that we've picked it, you can see all of the tables that exist. And one of them was MQTT consumer. That's the one we're interested in. So I'm gonna select that. Now over here, I see the value or the fields here. And one of them, the one that we only have here is value. And if I click value, I now have, it's created a query for me in for, basically looks very much like SQL, but it's for influx. And sure enough, we see a visualization up here and we're seeing two different values. And of course, I can go over here and click on visualization and I can pick a different one. So I could pick, for example, a bar graph and now I would have two bar graphs here. And if I don't like the fact that it's auto-generating the mins and maxes, I can go in here into the controls and I can say, let's make the minimum of 20 and the maximum of 35. Now I've created a bar graph that will update every time it gets a new temperature. So we can test this out. We can go back here and say, okay, let's say we went down to 24, so we can publish a 24. Notice our listener saw that here. We can come back here and we don't see anything yet and that's mainly because we, don't, we haven't set a refresh time. So this is not refreshing uh, at all. But if I click refresh, there it is. So now we have a new one. And of course this dashboard can be made live and we can set the refresh time. And so it will refresh every five seconds now um, with updates. So one other thing uh, just to show is we can go back to here and add another one. And so we do telegraph and we do MQTT and we go do uh, click on value. And this time for visualization, I want a single stat. Now, uh, the reason I bring this up is because this is a little weird because it looks like we are, um, it's showing a zero and that's because every time it's checking the numbers uh, for times, now we don't have any more updates, and so that's why the zero is there. But we can change that by going back to our query, and we can say fill previous, and by doing fill previous, what it's doing is it's now just taking the very the previous value that we got, the last value, and that's the what's going to go into that number field. So we can click OK, and now we have a nice big number in here. Okay, and one more we can do since I'm on a roll here. We can do telegraph MQTT value. Uh, let's make this previous. And then what I want to do is go to um, visualizations and I like this gauge here. So here's our gauge. And again, we could set minimums, maybe 15. Well, zero is good. And we would never get to 100 Celsius. So let's say uh, maybe 40. And now we have our gauge and we click OK. And there we are. Okay. So this is updating every five. One more shot at uh, updating this. So let's put this at 22. So we'll hit publish and 22 came up just fine. And we come back here to our, uh, to our dashboard and there it is. It updated to 22 based on the five second periodic rate.
So at this point, we are good to go. I mean, we set up everything and we have a very professional dashboard that we can do. We have an MQTT broker running and now it's just a matter of getting our Argon display to talk to this and that will be next. All right, so now that we have our tick stack set up, what we wanna do is go back to our code, basically our firmware that's running on the Argon and actually modify it to include MQTT and be a publisher of our temp data to our new MQTT broker, which then goes through Telegraph and goes into our Influx database, and then Chronograph actually shows the data in a dashboard. <clears throat> so this is pretty easy. Basically, I've included the MQTT library, and I've already covered how to get libraries, so I'll have the link up at the top for uh, how to do that in case you've forgotten. And then what we do is we create a callback here. A callback function is basically what MQTT client wants to call if we subscribe to something and we're getting data back as part of that subscription. Since we're not subscribing to anything, um, we don't need to put anything in this function, but we do need to supply it when we declare the client. So I'm just doing it this way. And it's also good practice that if we do decide to subscribe in the future, we've got a place already started to put, data, uh, to put our code. And then because uh, the droplet we've just set up only has an IP address, we specify IP addresses to the client initialization in a byte array. And that's uh, done right here. Um, if we were actually had an IP, uh, a URL going to our uh, droplet, we could just put the URL here in quotes and that would work as well. So this actually declares the MQTT client. And um, then let's go down and look at how we're actually getting the data. So we are actually creating a thread that is gonna call this function. And remember threads have to run forever. So it does a while one. And then the, it immediately looks to try to take a temperature value from our queue. And the queue will start out empty, and so we'll just stop here. But then in the future, as temperature readings come in um, through our reading of the temp sensor, we're putting those temperatures into the queue, and then this guy kicks off each time. And when it does, the first thing it does is make sure that we are actually connected to the broker. And I'll discuss in a minute um, the issue of how you can become disconnected uh, if you don't talk to it for a while. But in this case, we're gonna assume that we're hoping that this is good, we're checking. Are we connected? And if so, we actually do a publish and we're gonna publish to this particular uh, topic, which is WCL Talks Tech slash Argon Display. And this could be whatever topic name we wanted. This is where we create our thread uh, and then in loop down here, we're actually looping constantly. And this is where we will initially determine that we're not connected because we actually haven't connected yet. Uh, so because we aren't connected, it will do a connect with our client name, which again is arbitrary. It could be whatever we want. But what's interesting about this loop is as we're looping, we're constantly calling client.loop. And if we ever become disconnected for lack of use or whatever, it will try to connect again. And so this is pretty critical because otherwise what's gonna happen is this is gonna work for a while and then it's gonna stop working because it's gotten disconnected from the broker. So we wanna make sure that we're always connected. So basically if I push this code down to our target and run it, then I should start seeing new temperature values show up here. So let's give this a try. So the first thing we're gonna do is put this guy in DFU mode and we will flash this onto the target. Okay, so it is now flashed. And basically what it's doing right now is it's getting onto the mesh network getting onto Wi-Fi. Getting onto particle. And now we wait for a temperature reading. And so our other device, our Xenon, is doing a temperature reading every couple of, every five seconds or so. And sure enough, as soon as we got it, we have an update here. So this will update every time. So every time we get a new update, we just got a 24.5. So now it went up to that new number. 
So that's it. That's as easy as it is to actually include MQTT into your firmware and start sending data out to the cloud.